Welcome to Retirement Ramblings. I'm Scott. On this week's video called Life Lessons, we're going to talk about the 15 suggestions I have for making a happier, longer lasting marriage. This was something that came up. My son was recently married and he asked me uh, to share some quote unquote secrets with him and his bride. So this was the 15 things that I came up with. If that sounds interesting to you, please stick around. So life lesson number one for a happier, longer lasting marriage. Uh, that is to create a bubble of safety around yourselves and your children uh, if and when you have any. And what that means is uh, setting boundaries uh, that you both have discussed uh, and agreed to. And that framework is incredibly important uh, as your marriage has formally linked two families together um, that potentially have different uh, life experiences uh, and expectations. And so it means communicating these boundaries uh, in a clear and straightforward manner um, with your friends, your family, your acquaintances, um, siblings, grandparents, uh, so that um, expectations are appropriately set. Um, this will hopefully minimize any drama um, and set you on a uh, set out a positive tone for interactions over the course of, of your marriage. And you know the kind of subchapter that is not to let anyone force you uh, to do something that you don't want to do uh, or you think will cause a negative long-term consequences. It's much better to have the short-term pain uh, and disappointment that comes with you know, not agreeing to whatever the person had asked for, um, because my experience is that over time, uh, that will be forgotten, um, you know, and, you know, it's better, it's overall better for you and for your marriage. And just an example of this is, um, as, you know, when my son was originally born, you know, we wouldn't let anyone come see him for the first six weeks while uh, my wife was breastfeeding him. Um, you know, this did not make my mother uh, or um, my wife's uh, mother happy that they couldn't see their grandchild for six weeks, but it was something we felt strongly about. We didn't budge on it. And, uh, you know, they, they were able to come and spend time with him, you know, after the six week initial period was over. Uh, but I still hear about that to this day, but it was something that, you know, since we felt um, really strongly about we just didn't budge on and ultimately um, you know quite honestly his immune system was much better and he very rarely ever gets sick even now into adulthood so we were really happy with you know making that choice and you know like I said I think that creating that that bubble of safety with clear expectations is really important when you bring uh, two families together so uh, you know moving on to number two uh, that would be demonstrating trust to each other. You know, keep your word on big things and small things. Uh, promises uh, should be honored. So, you know, I don't care what it is. You know, if you make that promise or commitment, sorry, to uh, somebody, you know, you need to follow through with, with your, you know, your word. Kind of your word is your bond. Uh, number three is, you know, compromise with each other, uh, but not on your core values. So, you know, it... The follow-up question that they asked me was, well, what happens if you can't get to a resolution? And, you know, it's, it's, both of your core values are, you know, in such a way that you just can't kind of meet in the middle. And so my example to, or my answer to them was, well, you're going to just need to agree to disagree then and move forward. And, you know, again, that could be anything from, you know, how do you want to raise your children? What religion do you want them to be? You know, uh, how do you want school to be handled? Whatever it is that is really important to you, uh, you know, you need to stand firm on if that's part of your core values. Um, just as an example, like in my household growing up, my mother did not at all believe in, you know, corporal punishment, so hitting somebody. Um, my dad grew up in a household that that wasn't the case. And so, you know, they agreed uh, that, you know, that wasn't going to happen. And with one exception that I can recall, you know, I never got hit, uh, you know, other than that one time. And so, 
you know, it was just something that my mom had a really strong feeling about. And, uh, you know, my dad was willing to accommodate that request. So that would be, uh, again, number three. Uh, number four is, you know, be the other person's best friend. Um, I think that kind of is self-explanatory. Uh, number five is be supportive of each individual's dreams, you know, and aspirations. Uh, you know, I find that a lot of people go, have a one-sided relationship, but if you can, you know, try to make it as equal as possible and support each other in, you know, achieving the individual's goals, um, that goes a long way. Uh, for number six, uh, I'm saying to be supportive uh, of each other when times get difficult, because they will. And uh, knowing that someone's in your corner, uh, you know, and has your back will go a long way to helping them overcome whatever the difficulty or challenge is um, that's in front of you or in front of them. Number seven is demonstrate and verbalize gratitude and appreciation for each other's contributions to the marriage. Um, eight would be uh, celebrate good news and have fun. Um, you know, there's so much negativity in the world. It's really important, you know, to celebrate the wins, big and small. Uh, and kind of a follow-on to that, on number nine would be to maintain a focus on positivity. Um, as I said, there's plenty of negativity in the world, so you know, shield yourself as much as possible from that negativity. You know, and you know, happiness starts from within. Kind of like that Michael Jackson song that said, you know, start with the man in the mirror. So fundamentally, you know, you can't make another person happy. They need to be able to make themselves happy. You can help facilitate an environment where that happiness flourishes, but the ultimate happiness has to be coming from within. Uh, number 10, uh, don't, publish, don't publicly criticize each other. You know, criticism, criticism should be kept private between the two of you. Um, so I think that, you know, again, is really important, uh, you know, public criticism and humiliation uh, is not something that should happen in a marriage. Um, number 11, do things small for each other um, and do them often. It uh, doesn't matter what it is, you know, hopefully you'll be able to uh, understand uh, some of the other person's needs and desires and be able to, uh, you know, leverage that to kind of build goodwill, if you will, um, by doing a variety of things that, you know, kind of puts, puts uh, money in the bank, if you will, from, from their uh, emotional, kind of their emotional bank. Um, number 12 would be share the workload in your life. Uh, this will help, you know, stop uh, resentment from building up. So nobody wants to be doing all the work while the other person just coasts on by, it's really important to, you know, to divvy up the work of the household um, in, in all things. You know, you might be really good at one thing and the other person's at something else. And as long as you agree that that's kind of the divvying up of your responsibilities, that's great, but definitely don't put all the burden on, on one person or, you know, or even 80% of the burden on one person. And then 13 is, uh, you know, communicate. Uh, neither of you are mind readers, and no matter how long uh, you're together um, and how well you think you know each other, you can't read the other person's mind. So if you need something, you need to tell the person what it is that you need, whether that's, um, you know, I need a hug, I need someone to vent to, um, you know, I'm overwhelmed, whatever that is, you know, express yourself uh, and don't expect the other person uh to do something without you telling them and don't get mad because they didn't do it because you didn't communicate what the, the issue was. So, uh, and then 14, kind of even if you're young, you, you know, your time on this planet is limited. And so even though it's easier to say than it is to do, you know, do your best to not sweat the small stuff uh, and just kind of let that stuff kind of flow, float off your back, if you would. Um, your life will be much happier uh, if you can do that. Uh, and then 15, last but not least, um, try to maintain an affectionate um, 
nature throughout your marriage. You know, done right. Uh, marriage, you know, is a lifelong journey of affection, of companionship, of trust, and of love. So, kind of, those are the 15 things that, you know, I shared with uh, my son and his new bride. I'd love to get your thoughts on whether, you know, I left something important out, uh, or if you just don't agree with, with any of the 15 that I listed, uh, or, you know, just let me know uh, your thoughts on the subject. So if you'd leave that in the comments down below, certainly appreciate it. Um, and just take care. Thanks until the next time.